Hi guys, happy, happy new year. I am wishing you all a happy and healthy 2021. And to start the year off, I'm going to be sharing with you a video. I hadn't planned on doing this. I had a different video in mind, but I just have to do this video. So hopefully you will stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining me. This video is a video that was totally inspired by a video I watched last night. This was Susan, Little Poet's video, and it was her New Year's tag. And I know she's done this before, and I, I don't know. There was something about it when I listened to the tag questions that just so resonated with me. So I reached out to her and I asked her if she would mind if I were to do the tag and she said oh I'd love it go right ahead so here I am sort of like a you know total turnaround on what I had planned to do I did print out the tag questions so that I could stay on target but this is Little Poets New Year's tag and this is going to be all about the new year so the first question is rate 2020 on a scale of 1 to 10 I don't think this will be a surprise to any of you because we've all lived in the same 2020. I know for some of us, uh, 2020, I was talking to someone said, you know, 2020 hasn't been all that bad. So far I've survived COVID, I've done this, I've done that. And she had a great attitude about it. So when I look at 2020, to me, it was absolutely the pits. It is the worst year ever for COVID, for family issues. And just in, in, in general, it was so hard to find anything positive about 2020. So, the second question, of course, is what is your favorite memory of 2020? And I had to think back. Now, there was a couple of memories of before COVID hit, when life was still a normal life, when Jay and I went away for my birthday down the Cape. We had a fabulous time. I love Cape Cod. If you've never been to Cape Cod, it's just a, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. And we went down there, we rented an Airbnb, and we stayed there for my birthday weekend in February, and we just explored. We went up to the province town. We went to all the little towns. We went to the Kennedy compound. It was, it was an amazing, amazing trip. That was pre-COVID. And, but since COVID, and the remainder of the year, what far suppresses any of my memories is my grandson, Augie, his first birthday. Now, his first birthday, we celebrated it. We had to be socially smart, obviously, because COVID in the fall, it was just unbelievable. So it was a much smaller uh, gathering. We did as much social distancing as we could. We had, the, it is the most treasured memory of 2020, to be honest with you, because we had some of the family members, we enjoyed his birthday, and I think seeing the, the excitement of a young one-year-old opening gifts or just playing with wrapping paper and the simple things that gave him joy gave me so much joy. His daddy took him and his cousins on a little ride in his little, um, like a little wagon and um, hay ride, so to speak. And they had a little fire pit outside and it, it was just probably the best memory of 2020 that, that I can say because seeing the innocence of that child, of all the children exploring and smiling. Of course, they didn't know any better, so they're enjoying everything to the fullest. And that was just empowering for me because it, it gave me a huge sense of calmness. Number three, did you change as a person in 2020? <laughs> and how? Oh my gosh, profoundly. For me, I think my experience with everything that happened with my dad, I think when you, when you watch someone die and you're powerless, you're powerless to prevent it. You're powerless to make it change. Um, you realize the things that were once important to you are no longer important to you. 
when you're with someone and you're holding their hand as they're taking their last breaths and you're scared to death, you're scared to death because you're alone and you don't know what to expect, you don't know what's happening, but you're there. You put your fears aside. You put your fears aside and it was it was just a surreal experience for me and in, in many ways, I, I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled beyond belief that I was there with my dad, that he did not die alone because so many people, and he did not have COVID, but so many people that go in the hospital and no matter what their illness is and if they are sick, especially the elderly, no one's going to be able to get in there and see him and advocate for them. So, um, 2020 has deeply, deeply affected me very profoundly. And it is in that whole expectations of importance, what is important in life, and realizing that when you have to, you can push yourself to do something that you never imagined you would do. I certainly never imagined that I would be with my dad when my dad died. I never even imagined how it would, how, I couldn't even imagine my parents dying to begin with. So, anyways, number four. Favorite video you did in 2020 and why? I'll tell you, my favorite video was actually a tag I did, and this was a tag that Susan, little poet, did, and it was called The Road to Beautiful. And it was questions and confessions, and that video I was so hesitant about doing that video. I was so hesitant because I was afraid to really be honest in that video and say some of the feelings that I had. And then once I filmed it, I debated greatly. I talked to my husband. I, I really debated whether to even publish it because I was afraid to publish it. But I did. And it, it actually liberated me from, from the chains of this deep, even though it was hidden, pain that I was carrying around with me, deep inside me over all these years. Even though I thought I put certain things behind me away, I really hadn't. And I think when I came out in the video and talked about it, I, I think it pushed me through that invisible barrier of that held me back. It helped me break those chains. I know that sounds really weird, but I was bearing my soul and it ultimately was a very, very good thing. So yeah, that was, um, that was, a, that was a tag little uh, poet did, Susan, and, um, and I did it. So I'm gonna link it below. The other one, one or two products that blew you away. So it didn't say blew you away in 2020, but since this is a 2020 tag, I'm gonna definitely have to say, um, Many of you know I'm an earring lover, and I, I have many earrings. Um, someday I'll share with you my earring tree because I have, I have some really nice jewelry that's put away. Um, but my day-to-day -day jewelry, custom jewelry, I love sometimes, you know, different individual pieces and all that. Well, I recently, this is the second purchase I made off of this one person, Wendy. I'm going to show you some of the earrings that I bought. What you're seeing right now in this video clip is where I hang the ones I bought previously. I need to get myself another way of hanging my earrings because I love looking at the earrings. I love picking out my earrings, which ones I'm going to wear. And then I also had bought a second um, box, surprise box. Uh, you give her the pricing, you give her the guidance on what you're looking for and she creates. So, um, and I'll link her information below. So that kind of really blew me away because I, I, it made me feel good even in COVID to put earrings on. It made me feel pretty to have earrings. To have pretty earrings made me feel good. So that totally blew me away. And the other thing that blew me away is really late to the game. That has to be the Sally Hansen. And this is the two-step gel nail polish process that she has. I, I've talked about this in one of my favorites videos, but the reason why it blew me away is I have, I, I, I've been able to wear this nail polish for a week. I have never been able to wear, when I've done home, you know, like done my own polish at home, been able to pull off a polish more than two, maybe three days, and it starts to look awful. But this process really blew me away, and 
I am. So I would say being able to polish my nails. And so if I take it off after three or four days, it's because I want to take it off, not because I have to. But being able to wear nail polish for a week and still have it look decent is, to me, amazing. Amazing. So I keep thinking of the money I'm saving not going to the salon. I've got like six or seven bottles of this polish now. I usually buy it at Walgreens. You get Sometimes you can get like buy one, get two half off or one half off or something like that. So I would definitely have to say my, my earrings, my nail polish, and if I was going to throw a third thing in, it would definitely have to be my CBD products. Um, and now they wouldn't be new to 2020, but I continued in 2020 to use the CBD oil on my face. So not only do we, you know, take it in general, I've had gummies, I've had all different products, but for my face, I use the CBD from Aku. I put that on. Yes, it's expensive. I do like the 2,500 milligrams or the 5,000 milligrams. Is it milligrams? But anyways, you know what I mean. And, um, but you can, they have fantastic sales. So anyways, that would be a product that definitely blew me away is my CBD. The next question, what creator on YouTube inspired you the most in 2020? That's a hard one. Well, not really. I really have to say it was the lady who gave me permission to do this tag. It was Susan. You know, I have a good number of favorite YouTube content creators, people that I enjoy, that I watch the majority of their videos when I can, when I have time. People that I enjoy because I love their content. And then I have other YouTubers that I just absolutely adore and I've met them in real life. So uh, I, I've been blessed to have met a number of YouTubers in real life. I'm going to link them below because they'll be easy because I know who I've met. But the other is there's a few others that I wanted to meet that life happenings changed the plan and it didn't happen. So I'm hoping for in 2021 to meet some of them. But I do have a lot of YouTubers that I love that I feel totally comfortable with that I, uh, they're like my sisters, some of them. I've learned so much from them. I've learned skincare, makeup skills, hair, you know, um, jewelry. I've learned how to explore a sailboat across the world because I watch sailing videos. I watch RVing videos, so I watch a lot of videos. But I will have to tell you that Susan, you know, there's just something special about her videos, just something special about her way of telling a story, her way of using the imagery, the, the you know, her camera lens, and she bears her soul through her camera lens, and I know that every time I watch one of her videos, it is going to impact me. It's going to make me think deeply. It's going to make me reassess things in my life or how I've looked at things in my life. She inspires me to be better. And, you know, I know imitation is flattery. It's a compliment. But there are some people that are just so uniquely themselves. They're just so unique. In, in that there's no one, that imitation, trying to imitate that person is just going to fall flat because there's no one that can do that. And that's Susan to me. She always makes me, she always makes me look things at a deeper level, in a deeper level. And she does make me want to create. When I watched her video last night, it was so inspired to do this tag. And I was so inspired if only I could do the storytelling the way she tells it, the way she does it. But it can't. She is unique and she has a huge impact on me. And I'm me, I do things differently, but I hope I have an impact as well. So, yeah, Susan. What is your proudest accomplishment in 2020? I think my proudest accomplishment is truly pushing fear aside and being me, being selfless when you do something totally for another person that you never thought you'd do, that you do it no matter what the consequences are for you or the personal cost for you. Sometimes fear holds us back. And I think in 2020, fear held me back, but I learned to push through fear. 
and I learned to take a deep breath as I pushed myself through. I learned to take that deep breath, calming breaths, relaxing. And my goal for 2021 is to continue to face my fears and to continue to try to calm myself and my loved ones. And just remember to breathe. Just remember to take those deep healing breaths and certainly before reacting. Yeah. And question number nine. What is the one word you would use to describe yourself in 2021? You know, when I, when I watched Susan's video and she asked that question, the first thing that came to mind was breathe. And as soon as it came to my mind, she said that was her word. And I left a comment and I said, oh, that was my word. I'm going to think of another one. But I couldn't. Because every time I thought about it, breathing, taking a deep breath, breathe, just breathe, came back to me. And I said, okay, I'm going to imitate Susan on that. I am going to stick to breathe because that is what my year has been and what my goal will be for 2021 is to continue that path of deep reflection, of breathing, and trying to be the best possible human being I can be. And understanding I'll probably fall short because I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. So you can see how much Susan has impacted me in this video, I think. I've never met Susan. I, um, we did talk about a meetup, it, it, uh, you know, with, and I also with a few others that didn't happen. Um, but I would like to definitely meet Susan. I, I think she's that type of a person that in real life as well as on video that is going to really make you reflect upon life and reflect upon your actions and make you strive to be a better person because I think she sees everything through her lens is so clear so beautiful and oftentimes we look at ourselves and it's like looking into that ripple pond you can see yourself but there's waves and there's distortion and you don't really see yourself clearly and Susan has that way of making you open your eyes and wiping away the distortion and really looking at things around you and seeing things clearly. Yeah, I think, I, I, you know, I really think life is a reflection pool. It really is. You can look at it, you can see bits and pieces in and out, but it's really hard to hold it still and get a good, good picture. And my goal for 2021 is to continue to take those deep breaths and be the best me, the best moniker I can be. Yeah. Breathing deeply. Enjoying life. I am so hoping that 2021 is a much better year for all of us. And I know it's going to be slow going. I know we're going to have to go through some trying time still. I, I understand that. But I'm so optimistic that it will be better ultimately. I am. Thank you so much for sticking with me in 2020. And I hope you stick with me in 2021. If you're new to my channel, if you've joined me recently, thank you so much. I welcome you. Please make sure you hit the notification button. I do try to upload regularly. I don't have a fixed schedule though, I'm a bad girl, but I'm working on that. And for everyone else, thank you. Thank you all so much. Love to you all. Good health, wealth. Happy New Year. Whoops, I forgot one question. And that was what is the funniest, meanest, or strangest comment under a video?